building enumerations with Python's enum. Some programming languages, such as Java and C++, include syntax that supports a data type known as enumerations or just enums. This data type allows you to create sets of semantically related constants that you can access through the enumeration itself. Python doesn't have a dedicated syntax for enums, but the Python standard library has an enum module that supports enumerations through the enum class. If you come from a language with enumerations and you're used to working with them, or if you just want to learn how to use enumerations in Python, then this course is for you. In this course, you'll learn how to create enumerations of constants using Python's enum class, work with enumerations and their members in Python, customize enumeration classes with new functionalities, and code practical examples to understand why you would use enumerations. In addition, you'll explore other specific enumeration types that live in the enum module that will help you create specialized enums. To follow along with this course, you should be familiar with object-oriented programming and inheritance in Python. After finishing this course, you may want to look deeper into these two subjects and RealPython has you covered with this course on object-oriented programming and this one on inheritance. Any code that you see running in the REPL will be using the bPython interpreter. This is a replacement Python interpreter that offers a number of enhancements, including code highlighting and suggestions, but any code you see running on screen will work in the Python REPL, which is typically accessed by typing Python or Python 3 at your terminal or command line prompt. While enumerations were introduced in Python 3.4, Parts of this course rely on language features introduced in Python 3.11, so you'll need to be running that version or later to run all of the code examples seen. So now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. Getting to know enumerations in Python. Several programming languages such as Java and C++ have a native enumeration or enum data type as part of their syntax. This allows you to create sets of named constants which are considered members of the containing enum. You can access the members through the enumeration itself. Enumerations come in handy when you need to define an immutable and discrete set of similar or related constant values that may or may not have semantic meaning in your code. Days of the week, months, seasons of the year, Earth's cardinal directions, a program status code, HTTP status codes, colors in a traffic light, and pricing plans of a web service are all great examples of enumerations in programming. In general, you can use an enum whenever you have a variable that can take one of a limited set of possible values. Python doesn't have an enum data type as part of its syntax. Fortunately, Python 3.4 added the enum module to the standard library. This module provides the enum class for supporting general purpose enumerations in Python. They were introduced by PEP 435, which defines them as seen on screen. Before this addition to the standard library, you could create something similar to an enumeration by defining a sequence of similar or related constants. Python developers often use the idiom seen on screen. Even though this works, it doesn't scale well when you're trying to group a large number of related constants. Another inconvenience is that the first constant will have a value of zero, which is falsy in Python. This can be an issue in some situations, especially those involving Boolean tests. If you're using a Python version prior to 3.4, then you can create enumerations by installing the enum34 library, which is a backport of the standard library enum. The aenum third-party library could be an option for you as well. Enumerations have several benefits, some of which relate to ease of coding. Allowing for conveniently grouped related constants in a kind of namespace, Allowing for additional behavior with custom methods that operate on either enum members or the enum itself. Providing quick and flexible access to enum members. Enabling direct iteration over members, including their names and values. Facilitating code completion within IDEs and editors. Enabling type and error checking with static checkers. Providing a hub of searchable names. 
and mitigating spelling mistakes when using the members of an enumeration. They also provide a number of benefits, ensuring constant values that can't be changed during the code's execution, guaranteeing type safety by differentiating the same value shared across several enums, improving readability and maintainability by using descriptive names instead of mysterious values or magic numbers, facilitating debugging by taking advantage of readable names instead of values with no explicit meaning, and providing a single source of truth and consistency throughout the code. Now that you know the basics of enumerations in programming and in Python, you can start creating your own enum types by using Python's enum class, and that's what you'll be doing in the next part of the course. Creating enumerations with Python's enum. Python's enum module provides the enum class, which allows you to create enumeration types. To create your own enumerations, you can either subclass enum or use its functional API. Both options will let you define a set of related constants as enum members. The enum module defines a general purpose enumeration type with iteration and comparison capabilities. You can use this type to create sets of named constants that you can use to replace literals of common data types such as numbers and strings. A classic example of when you should use an enumeration is when you need to create a set of enumerated constants representing the days of the week. Each day will have a symbolic name and a numeric value between 1 and 7 inclusive. On screen you can see how to create this enumeration by using enum as your superclass or parent class. The day class is a subclass of enum. So you can call day an enumeration or just an enum. Day Monday, day Tuesday and the like are enumeration members, also known as enum members or just members. Each member must have a value which needs to be constant. Often the values mapped to members are consecutive integer numbers. However, they can be of any type including user defined types. In this example, the value of day Monday is 1, day Tuesday is 2, and so on. Because enumeration members must be constants, Python doesn't allow you to assign new values to members at runtime. If you try to change the value of a member, you get an attribute error. You may have noticed that the members of day are capitalized, and on screen you can see why. You can think of enumerations as collections of constants. Like lists, tuples or dictionaries, Python's enumerations are also iterable. That's why you can use list to turn any enumeration into a list of enumeration members. The members of a Python enumeration are instances of the container enumeration itself. You shouldn't confuse a custom enum class such as day with its members, day Monday, day Tuesday, and so on. In this example, the day enum type is a hub for enumeration members, which happen to be of the type day. Unlike member names, the name containing the enumeration itself isn't a constant, but a variable. So it's possible to rebind this name at any moment during your program's execution, but you should avoid doing that. As you've just seen, you've reassigned day, which now holds a string rather than the original enumeration. By doing this, you've lost the reference to the enumeration itself. You can also use range to build enumerations. Here, range is used with the start and stop arguments. The start argument allows you to provide the number that starts the range, while the stop argument defines the number at which the range will stop generating numbers. Even though you use the class syntax to create enumerations, they're special classes that differ from normal Python classes. Unlike regular classes, enums can't be instantiated, can't be subclassed unless the base enum has no members, provide a human-readable string representation for their members, they're iterable, returning their members in a sequence, they provide hashable members that can be used as dictionary keys, 
They support the square bracket syntax, call syntax, and dot notation to access their members, and they don't allow member reassignments. You should keep all these subtle differences in mind when you start creating and working with your own enumerations in Python. While members often take consecutive integer values, it's possible that the values can be of any type, including user-defined types. Here's an enumeration of school grades that uses non-consecutive numeric values in descending order. This shows that Python enums are flexible and allow you to use any meaningful value for their members. You can set the member values according to the intent of your code. You can also use string values for members. Here's an example of a size enumeration that you can use in an online store. The value associated with each size holds a description that can help you and other developers understand the meaning of your code. In the next section of the course, you'll take a look at the creation of enumerations in more depth. More enumeration creation. You've already seen enumerations with integers and strings, but you can also create enumerations of Boolean values. In this case, the members of your enumeration will have only two values. In this example, anyone reading the code will know that it emulates a switch object with two possible states. This additional information improves the code's readability. The same goes for this example, making it clear that the response is yes or no. You can also define an enumeration with heterogeneous values. However, this practice makes your code inconsistent from a type safety perspective, so it's not recommended. Ideally, it would help if you had values of the same data type, which is consistent with the idea of grouping similar related constants in enumerations. You can also create empty enumerations. In this example, empty represents an empty enumeration because it doesn't define any member constants. Note that you can use the parse statement, the ellipsis literal, or a class level doc string to create empty enumerations. The last approach can help you improve the readability of your code by providing extra content in the doc string. But why would you need to define an empty enumeration? They can come in handy when you need to build a hierarchy of enum classes to reuse functionality through inheritance. Consider this example. Here, you create base text enum as an enumeration with no members. You can only subclass a custom enumeration if it doesn't have members, so base text enum qualifies. The alphabet class inherits from the empty enumeration, which means that you can access the asList method. This method converts the value of a given member into a list. In the next section of the course, you'll take a look at another feature of Python's enumerations, the functional API. Creating enumerations with a functional API. The enum class provides a functional API that you can use to create enumerations without using the usual class syntax. You'll just need to call enum with appropriate arguments, as you would do with a function or any other callable. This functional API resembles the way the named tuple factory function works. In the case of enum, the function signature has the form seen on screen. From this signature, you can conclude that enum needs two positional arguments, value and names. It can also take up to four optional and keyword-only arguments, module, qualname, type and start. 
On screen is a table that summarizes the content and meaning of each argument in the signature of enum. To provide the names argument, you can use a string containing member names separated either with spaces or commas, an iterable of member names, or an iterable of name value pairs. The module and qual name arguments play an important role when you need to pickle and unpickle your enumerations. If module isn't set, Python will attempt to find it. If it fails, then the class will not be pickleable. Similarly, if qual name isn't set, Python will set it to the global scope, which may cause your enumerations to fail unpickling in some situations. The type argument is required when you want to provide a mixing class for your enumeration. Using a mixing class can provide your custom enum with new functionality, such as extended comparison capabilities, as you'll learn later on in the course. Finally, the start argument provides a way to customize the initial value of your enumerations. This argument defaults to one rather than zero. The reason for this default value is that zero is false in a Boolean sense, but in num members evaluate to true. Therefore, starting from zero would be a little inconsistent and potentially confusing. Most of the time, you'll just use the first two arguments to enum when creating your enumerations. On screen is an example of creating an enumeration of common HTTP methods. This call to enum returns a new enumeration called HTTP method. To provide the member names, you use a list of strings, each of which represents an HTTP method. Note that the member values are automatically set to consecutive integer numbers starting from one. You can change this initial value using the start argument. Note that defining these enumerations with a class syntax will produce the same result. Here, you use the class syntax to define HTTP method. This example is completely equivalent to the previous one, as you can conclude from the output of list. Using either the class syntax or the functional API to create your enumeration is your decision and will mostly depend on your taste and concrete conditions. However, if you want to create enumerations dynamically, then the functional API may be your only option. Consider this example where you create an enum with user provided members. Remember that this example is intended to show that the functional API is the way to go when you need to create enumerations dynamically. It's not good programming practice because creating any object from your user's input is quite risky, considering that you can't predict what they will input, so doing so without measures to sanitize this input is a bad idea. Finally, if you need to set custom values for your enum members, then you can use an iterable of name value pairs as your names argument. In the example seen on screen, you use a list of name value tuples to initialize all the enumeration members. Providing a list of name value tuples makes it possible to create the HTTP status code enumeration with custom values for the members. If you didn't want to use a list of name value tuples, then you could also use a dictionary that maps names to values. In the next section of the course, you'll look deeper at enumerations with automatic values, aliases, and unique values.